Hello, I'm doing a book review, and the book I want to review is Abracadabra by Stephen Gresham. Now, this was published in 1988, and this is a horror dark fantasy novel that plot-wise feels very similar to books like Ghost Story by Peter Straub and It by Stephen King. Ghost Story because this is really the story of a group of old men who, when they were young men, and did something, and now their past is coming back to haunt them, and it because it's about a group of people who battled an evil when they were younger, and now that evil has come back. The big difference between this and It is, in It, the flashbacks took up a significant portion of that novel to a point where the flashbacks in that book could have been their own novel unto themselves, and in here, the backstory is really only explained in, like, maybe ten pages. Now, I can't speak to whether or not Stephen King's It was actually an influence on this book, but I know Stephen Gresham has said that Peter Straub's ghost story was an influence on this novel. Now, this book was put out by a publishing company called Zebra, under their label Zebra Horror, and their big claim to fame in the 80s was their sort of outlandish covers for a lot of their horror titles, and I know they put out a lot of William W. W. Johnstone's books. And admittedly, and I know the golden rule is not to judge a book by its cover, but it was the cover that got me interested in buying this. I actually saw this at, I was at a convention a few months ago, and one of the vendors was selling a bunch of used books, and this was one of them, so that was the big reason why I got this. That, and I was also already familiar with the publishing company. And while the book was good, nothing quite as awesome as a zombie rabbit popping out of a hat that happens in this story. Now, what the plot of Abracadabra is it's about this 11-year-old girl named Juice Smith. Now, Juice is not her real name. Her real name is Olivia Jance, I believe, but because her first two initials is OJ, everybody she knows calls her Juice. But she has a real interest in magic, and she wants to be a magician when she grows up, and her grandfather really encourages this, and her grandfather is part of a group of local magicians who call themselves the sleights of hand. So, Juice's grandfather gives her this skeleton key, and this key is very, very important, and even the other members of the sleights of hand are kind of skeptical on why he gave her this key, considering what this key is. It turns out that when they were young men, the sleights of hand got involved with real magic, and there was an evil magician named Robert Le Fay who sold his soul to the devil and was granted immortality and demotic powers. And they realized that Le Fay had to be stopped, so using magic, they trapped him, but now that Juice has this skeleton key, she unwittingly sets Le Fay free, not realizing who or what he actually is. And now LeFay seeks revenge on Juice's grandfather and his friends. Now, I thought Abracadabra was a very enjoyable read. It does have some flaws, in my opinion. I hate to say it, probably the biggest flaw is in the plot itself. Okay, you have a pissed-off demotic wizard who you know hates your guts, and you give your granddaughter the one thing that can set this asshole free? Did you really think this through, Nate? Nate's the grandfather's name. The book does kind of justify it a little bit, where you realize that LeFay was locked up in a part of this theater that was closed off, and Nate never thought that Juice would find this part of the theater. And then construction workers open up this part of the theater, and that's how Juice finds the magic trunk that LeFay is locked up in. So it does sort of justify it a little bit, but at the same time, though, knowing the risks, I don't know if I would have risked given the one thing that can set this guy free to my 11-year-old granddaughter. But if you're willing to look past that plot hole, it's not a bad book. It's not a bad book at all, and it's actually a really fun and quick read. And the relationship between Juice and her grandfather is actually really sweet and really adorable, and that's kind of the heart of the book.
And there is some commentary in this book on child abuse, because it turns out that Juice's mother is very, very abusive towards her. But her mother is not an unsympathetic character, because in the novel you find out that a few years prior to the events of this story, Juice's older brother died, and this is sort of really... It caused her mother to have sort of a psychological breakdown... And in the novel, you see LaFay manipulating Juice's mother, saying, Hey, I know a way you could contact your dead son. And it's actually really heartbreaking, and it really shows you just how ruthless LaFay actually is. And LaFay is a really interesting villain, and even though he's not the devil himself, he could almost work as like a stand-in for the devil, because he does have some Mephisto-like qualities to him. He also reminded me a lot of the character of Mr. Dark, who is the main villain of Ray Bradbury's Something Wicked This Way Comes. Also, if you're at all interested in Harry Houdini, there are a lot of references in this story. It also talks about how he would expose false psychics, which is something he actually did, and it also references the movie The Man from Beyond, which is an old silent movie from the 20s that Harry Houdini starred in. I thought that was pretty interesting because I'm a big movie buff and I love silent movies. But yeah, that was my review on Abracadabra by Stephen Gresham. I do think it's a good book. I do think it has some minor flaws. Like, as I said, there is kind of a plot hole in the plot itself. And also, there are some things in this book that I feel the author could have gone more into. For example, there's a character in this book who's a friend of Juice's mother, who it's heavily implied that Juice's mother is sleeping with. And this guy ends up joining LaFay, but the book really doesn't do anything with this character. And then there's some dialogue in the book that could be seen as a little cheesy, but regardless, I still thought it was an enjoyable read, and if you're looking for a fun, quick read, I recommend it. So, that was my review, and bye.